Uh, welcome back. Live music in South Africa is alive and kicking. A new study of South African live music has shown that the country's cities have an active uh, and flourishing live music scene. With this rapid growth, there are serious barriers to its future sustainability and growth. Now, Samra Managing Director Andre Lerie is here to tell us more about the, uh, discuss the landscapes of live music in South Africa. Andre, good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. Hi, Lebo. Always such a pleasure having you on the program. What um, inspired the study? What inspired the study is, you know, often we get asked, what's the value of the music industry in mm. South Africa? And when people talk about the value of the music industry, often they refer to recorded music. That's the dying part of the yeah. music industry. The growing part of the music industry is live. The part that puts money in the hands of artists and the pockets of artists mm -hmm. and their families are live. So, and nobody knows exactly what the value is yeah. and neither how to grow it. So for the artists, it's important so that they know the spaces they can perform at. Mm -hmm. For the venue owners, they need to know how to survive better. Mm. And for the audiences like yourselves, you need to know where the gigs are, that it's happening and that you can go. So for us as the Samro Foundation, we saw it important to time not only quantify the sector, mm. but to see what we can do about growing live music circuits. What did you find in this study? <clears throat> what we found, we researched over 200 venues. Yeah. Initially, the study was done in 2010 by Mashito. It was done last year by the Concerts SA program. What we found was that actually there are quite a few venues. Mm. Many of them are established in the last five years. Also, quite a number of the venues die. And the reason they die is because it's very difficult to run these venues. So uh, what the research said was that we need to foster those kinds of small venues. We've got to figure out what makes them tick. And then most of all, we've got to figure out how do you get the goods, the cultural goods, being the artist, to move from one venue to the next. Mm. So you develop a circuit. What the research also pointed to is that the, on the technology, and the research was compiled by Gwen Ansel mm. and Helena Barnard. Yeah. Helena Barnard is uh, she, she's a very important person in terms of understanding how industries work. Mm. And what, sh what they realized is that technology has also influenced the live music sector. Yeah. Uh, PA systems are a bit cheaper. We also found that many of the venues are now better resourced. Many of them have technical. Many of them have started to use social media. Mm. Some of them are starting to pay their artists better. Of course, for us, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they are becoming more sustainable. Mm. But still, there are problems. There yeah. are major challenges. As we know that the audiences are niched. Yeah. We come from an apartheid society. We come from apartheid cities. And the cities themselves, that's where live music is thriving more than ever before. But the problem are the rural areas. <coughs> In the rural areas, you don't have live music venues. Mm. In the disadvantaged areas, we've still got the community walls that are under-resourced. In provinces uh, like those that are not the Western Cape, and Gauteng and uh, uh, KZN, 5% of the festivals occur in all the remainder of the provinces. So there's a dearth of live music performance, mm. especially there's a weakness when it comes to these venues. Yeah. So on the one hand, it was to develop the research, to develop a project called the Concerts SA Program, yes, yeah. so that we can strengthen the live music circuits. What is somebody who has a, a live venue how do they start to turn things around and they're listening to our conversation and thinking, what do I do with it? I think number one is to visit our website mm -hmm. and to read the document yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the document points to, you know, we got, we, we met with, um, we were working with 12 venues across mm. the country and we got the venues in Johannesburg together. It includes Nikki's and African Freedom Station and a couple of those venues in Soweto Theatre. And then we were working with Rainbow Room and Bat Centre and all of those in Durban. And in the Western Cape, we're working with Mahogany Room, the Crypt, and a number of other venues. Mm. When we got the venues together, it was amazing how little they knew of each other. Now, if you're going to be trading goods, yeah. you need to know who the other people are. Either you compete with them or you collaborate with them. We'd like them to collaborate. How do you strengthen? You learn from other venues. How, how do you be able to program your own venue is to know that, okay, maybe Herbert Swahili is performing in the area yeah. on this particular date. Mm -hmm. I can use him for the next date. Yes. But if you look through the research, it gives them a bit of a guide. There's a range of recommendations. How do you use the technology at your disposal? 
how do you market to the audience a bit better? Mm. Because in the arts, as, as you'd probably know, often we focus our funding on creating. And for me, it's like cooking. Yeah. We're creating this fantastic meal of the arts, but we don't invite people to come and eat. We don't inform the audience enough as to as there's regular meals available. Yeah. There's regular performances available. We don't engage with the audiences. And this is from the venue owners as well as from the artists. They don't engage with their fan base enough. That's why it was interesting listening to your earlier interview. Engaging with your fan base is of crucial importance. Mm. So the research itself, we'd like people like yourselves, researchers, policy makers, to engage with the research. And it's nice that it's not state-driven research. Mm. It's driven from Samro as a corporate, because right. for us, it's about the business of music. Okay. So, um, <coughs> Andre, I almost called you Samro. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we see you, we see Samro. Andre, uh, thank you so much for talking to us. Thanks, <laughs> Andre so Leroux, giving us a full insight on how the live music industry works. There's a need to raise awareness about live music in terms of community activation to build an audience. Well, let's take a break.